Hello everyone, how are you? Now we are going to discuss about another question regarding MRCS which will, uh, which will be very helpful for you to prepare yourself for MRCS exam. So let's start the question. Which of the following structure are at risk of direct injury following a fracture dislocation of femoral condyle? So here we can see uh, risk of direct injury that means a structure which is very closely to the another structure fracture dislocation of femoral condyle that means a structure which lies very close to the femoral condyle and if the fracture and dislocation occurs the femoral condyle it will damage a structure which is closely related to it so we have to find out a structure which is very close to femoral condyle which is very close to femoral condyle and the fracture dislocation of the femoral condyle will damage the structure so uh, here the options the options are popliteal artery sciatic nerve plantaris muscle tbl artery tbl nerve so we have to find out in the five structure which structure is closely related to the femoral condyle so here we can see the different structure which is present in the popliteal fossa near to the femoral condyle in this area uh, if we uh, uh, think in this area here the femoral condyle lies in the two side of the femur so here is structure first of all we can see uh, this is tbl nerve tbl nerve and common peroneal nerve and we know the tbl nerve and common peroneal nerve they arises from sciatic nerve which lies more above like this area so sciatic nerve is not present in popliteal fossa and not close to the femoral condyle we also can see here in the deep structure there are popliteal vessels and we also can see the muscles in the thigh and the leg And here, uh, the head of the gastrocnemius will contract to pull the fracture segment posteriorly. Here, it is important if uh, there is a uh, fracture occurs in the uh, condylar area or femoral condyle, the gastrocnemius muscle which is present in uh, the leg, it will uh, contract and the femoral condyle uh, also become pulled and it causes injury injury to uh, this structure because the femoral condyle uh, comes to the back so in uh, another picture in the next picture here we can see so in this picture we can see the different structure in the popliteal fossa and the lower part of the popliteal fossa it, uh, there is Uh, presence of femoral condyle so here we can see in the popliteal fossa they are uh, in the lateral to medial so here lateral to medial they are common peroneal nerve which is present this there is another important nerve that is tvl nerve and in the more medially there is a vein popliteal vein and another popliteal artery so we have to see in the most important structure there which is very close to popliteal condyle so here we can see the condyle so if fracture occurs in this area this muscle will pull the uh, fracture segment and it causes uh, pull posterior to the a lower part of the femur which causes injury here we can see the nerve which lies more superficial then femoral vein then then popliteal vein and popliteal artery so popliteal artery it is very close to the lower part of the femur and it is adjoined to the bones so it is very every chance of injury to this popliteal artery 
so here we can see another picture this is popliteal artery and popliteal artery it is very close very very close to the femur and it uh, uh, any fracture occurs in the uh, um, condylar area it will damage the popliteal artery so our final answer is popliteal artery and other nerve sciatic nerve sciatic nerve it ends at the upper part of the popliteal fossa so there is no chance of injury plantar is muscle muscle usually have not damaged or not get injured then tbl artery tbl artery it lies in the tbl artery it lies in the leg uh, it is far below uh, be, uh, below uh, from the uh, condyle of the femur and tbl nerve tbl nerve is one of the superficial nerve in popliteal fossa so there is less chance of injury